In this video, we're going to provide a basic overview of the concepts underlying deferred taxes. The underlying difference finds its foundation in the difference between taxable income per the IRS and taxable income per GAAP. Corporations have to file income tax returns based on IRS guidelines or the Internal Revenue Code. However, they also must prepare financial statements in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. There are a number of ways in which GAAP differs from the Internal Revenue Code, and these differences give rise to deferred taxes. So again, financial statements are prepared in accordance with GAAP, and pre-tax financial income does not equal taxable income per the IRS. And then, of course, income tax expense per GAAP won't equal income taxes payable per the IRS. The differences between GAAP and tax-based income are based on both temporary and permanent differences. Temporary differences are differences that will reverse themselves in future years or future periods. Some examples include bad debt expense. Under the matching principle, we have to record an allowance for doubtful accounts and accrue bad debt expense. The same thing is true for warranty obligations and unearned revenue. Under the IRS tax code, we don't write off bad debt expense until we actually tear up the receivable and decide we're not going to be paid by a particular customer. Warranty obligations for tax purposes, we record the expense when we actually perform the repair. And again, in terms of unearned revenue, generally we report revenue for tax purposes when we collect cash from the customers. Other differences involve depreciation methods that can be different for both GAAP and tax purposes, as well as the lives of our fixed assets, stock-based compensation, unrealized gains and losses that are recorded for GAAP purposes, but not for tax purposes. And these are just a few of many different types of temporary differences. And it is these temporary differences that will give rise to deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. Permanent differences, on the other hand, are differences that will not reverse themselves in future years. Examples include interest received on state and municipal obligations, expenses incurred of obtaining tax-exempt income, premiums and proceeds on life insurance carried by the company on key officers or employees, fines and expenses resulting from a violation of law, None of these are deductible for tax purposes, but we do record them as expenses on our financial statements. Again, it's the temporary differences that give rise to deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. Taxable temporary differences will increase future taxable income and therefore result in deferred tax liabilities. Deductible temporary differences decrease future taxable income, and will result in deferred tax assets. Let's walk through a brief example. In our example, we're going to assume a company has the same amount of revenues as well as expenses in each of the following six years. Therefore, its revenues and expenses before depreciation will be the same for both financial reporting purposes and tax reporting purposes. We're also going to assume our assets, we have an asset that costs $12,000, and we're going to depreciate it over a six-year life for financial reporting purposes, or we'll take depreciation expense of $2,000 a year. And for tax purposes, we'll assume it has a four-year life, so the depreciation expense will be slightly higher, $3,000 a year for the first four years, after which it will be fully depreciated. Our depreciation expense for financial reporting purposes will be $2,000, giving us taxable income for book purposes of $8,000. At a 20% tax rate, we would record $1,600 in tax expense and $6,400 in net income. For tax purposes, on the other hand, we have $3,000 in depreciation expense or $7,000 in taxable income, leaving us with a $1,400 bill for taxes, in other words, what we owe the IRS. Our journal entry will be as follows. We record tax expense of $1,600, taxes payable of $1,400, and of course, debits don't equal credits, and we'll record a deferred tax liability of $200. It's not quite as simple as that direct plug we will see later on. 
we will basically have a thousand dollar timing difference and at a 20 percent tax rate that results in a two hundred dollar future tax liability but for now we can just look at it as our plug in year two we will report the same two hundred dollars in depreciation book depreciation for financial reporting purposes and a sixteen hundred dollar tax expense for tax purposes, we've got $7,000 in taxable income and a $1,400 tax liability. Our journal entry, once again, is a debit to tax expense for $1,600, a credit to taxes payable for $1,400, and a credit to our deferred tax liability of $200. Notice, the balance in our deferred tax liability account will now grow to $400. Let's take a look and see what happens in year three. In fact, in years three and four, we will still have the exact same journal entry, a debit to tax expense of $1,600, and a credit to taxes payable for $1,400, and a credit to our deferred tax liability of $200. And notice, our ending balance in our deferred tax liability is now $800. Again, I want to emphasize, here we've kind of looked at that $200 as the plug, but in reality, we should think about it as the $1,000 arising timing difference of $1,000 multiplied by our 20% tax rate. Let's go ahead and see what happens in years five and six. In year five, we'll have the same $8,000 in taxable income and $1,600 tax expense. However, for tax purposes, we will no longer have $3,000 in depreciation expense, but rather zero for depreciation expense because our asset has been fully depreciated four years at three thousand dollars that brings our taxable income up to ten thousand dollars and we'll have a two thousand dollar tax liability let's take a look at that year five journal entry notice the debit to tax expense of sixteen hundred dollars the credit to taxes payable of two thousand and then we will decrease our deferred tax liability by four hundred dollars and notice our deferred tax liability account goes from $800 down to $400. We'll make this same entry in year six. And when we make the same entry, we notice our asset, or rather our balance on our deferred tax liability account goes to zero. And the other thing we notice is that our taxable income over the six year period is the same as our financial reporting income. The total depreciation expense is both the same for book and taxes. Our bottom line net income is the same for both book and taxes. The difference, again, is a difference in timing of when we take our depreciation expense. For financial reporting in this example, we spread our depreciation expense out over four years, rather six years, and for tax purposes, only over four years. This gave rise to a taxable temporary difference, which resulted in increase in future taxable income. That was in year six, five and six, and it resulted in a deferred tax liability. Let's walk through a short problem involving a deferred tax liability. The Riverbed Corporation began operations in 2017 and reported pre-tax financial income of $213,000 for the year. Riverbed's depreciation tax depreciation exceeded book depreciation by $43,000. Its tax rate for 2017 and years thereafter is 30%. We're going to assume that this is the only difference between Riverbed's pre-tax financial income and taxable income. In other words, there's no other timing differences or permanent differences. Let's go ahead and prepare the journal entry to record our income tax expense, deferred taxes, and taxes payable. We were told that our pre-tax uh, financial income was $213,000 and our tax depreciation expense exceeded our book depreciation expense by $43,000. Um, again, this will reduce our current taxable income and our current tax liability. It's a temporary difference that we're going to have to pay for with higher taxes later. So our taxable income is the 213 minus the 43,000 or 170,000 dollars. 
we were told that we had a 30% tax rate. So our tax liability per our IRS calculations will be $51,000. And we're going to credit taxes payable for $51,000. Again, we had a $43,000 timing difference, and our expected future tax rate, and actually our future tax rate is going to be 30%, unless, we, unless it changes in the future, we assume the current rate will carry forward. So we have a deferred tax liability of 30% times the 43,000 of $12,900, and that's a credit. Our tax expense, then, is the sum of our deferred tax liability of 51,000 and rather our tax is payable of 51,000 and our deferred tax liability of $12,000 or $63,900. We're going to take a look at another example, this one involving a deferred tax asset. Again, we're going to be looking at Riverbed Corporation and it reports pre-tax financial income of $213,000. And it has an estimated assurance type warranty liability of $23,000. Recall, for book purposes, we accrue assurance type warranties. For tax purposes, however, warranty costs are not deductible until paid, and our effective tax rate is 40%. Let's go ahead and take a look at our journal entry to record tax expense, deferred income taxes, and income taxes payable. Again, we begin with our pre-tax financial income and adjust it for the $23,000 warranty liability that was accrued at year end. So we recorded $23,000 in warranty expense for financial reporting purposes, but we can't deduct it until those costs are actually paid for tax purposes. That gives us taxable income of 213 plus the 23 of 236 thousand dollars. We had a 40 percent tax rate in this example, so our taxes payable will be 40 percent times the 236 thousand, and we'll record income taxes payable of 90 thousand dollars, 94 thousand four hundred dollars. Again, we had a 23 thousand dollar timing difference and a 40% expected or future tax rate, which means we have a deferred tax asset of $9,200. Again, warranty expense for book purposes will decrease our pre-tax income, but not taxable income. And our taxes payable is based on our higher taxable income. So we're going to pay um, more in taxes today, but we'll get to pay less in taxes in the future when we actually incur the warranty expenditures for repairing our customer products. In essence, we can think of ourselves as having prepaid our taxes, and we've got a deferred tax asset of $9,200. Our income tax expense is $85,200. That's our 94400 taxes payable minus the $9,200 we're recording in terms of a deferred tax asset.